Hey guys, how you doing? You can see by the title of this video um, what exactly it's about. Um, I have tried to film this about five times. Um, today's actually the fourth. Um, I'm sorry if my thing's hopping around. If you don't follow me on Instagram, then you probably don't know what's going on. Roughly a little over two weeks ago, my younger brother passed away. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to keep this very short <clears throat> to kind of let you guys know where I've been. Um, but I also don't want to go into like great detail because number one, it's super traumatic for me to talk about right now. Um, it's still too... I feel like it's still too fresh of a wound for me to keep rehashing. So I'm just gonna try to keep this like to a minimum. Um, he, he ended up in the hospital on June 14th um, due to some health issues he was having. Um, and everything kind of just started to spiral um they weren't really clear on giving my mom like clean cut answers um she was in contact every day with doctors calling constantly because he went in on sunday june 14th and monday june 14th uh, june 15th he ended up having like um an extremely bad like episode where um he was profusely vomiting blood. I know TMI, but he had a health situation that had happened where that had caused that and they had to place him on a ventilator. Um, throughout the week, things were up and down. Um, he was in critical condition from Monday to Thursday. Um, Thursday, they, Thursday, they discovered that he had aspiration pneumonia from the ventilator being in and him trying to um, expel fluid, it ended up in his lungs. Um, that landed him on life support. While he was in the hospital, he had to receive several blood transfusions. First, they had told my mom that they, that he, things were all over the place. They just, they just, I don't think they really knew what was happening. It was just a whole, Mod podge of things that just started to happen and once things started to happen like it just kind of spiraled um so but i did want to come on here because i do have some other videos that i had filmed and i didn't want to release them like just put them out there before i posted this because i said i was coming back to youtube and then all of a sudden i disappear again um but it's just been a really rough few weeks um, because for those of you that don't know, July, the end of July is the anniversary of my dad's death. This July 30th, it'll be nine years since my dad passed. He also had an extremely, extremely horrific passing um, that was very, very hard on our family. And um, it's just, I'm still kind of in a state of shock because I've mentioned in videos before that my brother and I, for the past few years, our relationship was very rocky. Um, mainly because he was stubborn and I'm very stubborn as well. So I'll just leave it at that. But as an older sibling, you know, I always, I always tried to intervene, you know, when I felt like, like things weren't where they should be with him tried to give advice, tried to push him in the right direction, and he just didn't really want to hear what I had to say most of the time. So we kind of butted heads over like our differences of opinion and differences of lifestyles. Um, so it just, I'm carrying around a lot of guilt right now. Even though I know I shouldn't, I am because I just wish there was more that I could have done and I wish that I could have saved him, but. Anyway, like I had said, he was placed on life support Thursday after they did a procedure to remove the contents from his lungs. 
and um, they were we were left with a uh, a um, I guess you could say decision. I don't even know if that, if that's what you want to call it because they basically said you know leaving him on life support while things that were going on within his body and organs were starting to shut down and, and some just really bad stuff was happening and he was suffering. So mom and I had talked. Uh, she was allowed to go in and see him finally on Thursday. They did not allow her in prior to that because of COVID, but um, she was allowed Thursday in with him. She was allowed to be with him when he passed. I stayed in the car on FaceTime. Um, um, actually, when he had passed, um, I don't know. I'm just like all over the place right now. I know I've been MIA and I've been like, I've been on Instagram a bit here and there, but I've just been trying to kind of deal with some things, like, you know, the emotions that come with dealing with grief and, and all of the stuff that comes with losing someone. Um, because this has just been horrific because I never thought that at my age I would be like dealing with this, this particular death. Like I did not think that this was gonna happen, you know? So I just kind of wanted to touch base with you guys. And like I said, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because out of respect for my family and you know, um, my mom, I didn't want to really come on and say like a whole lot of what exactly was happening. Um, I also did not feel right posting videos that I had already recorded because I hadn't posted because he was in the hospital for like a week. And then when he had passed, like it was just so like, he didn't expect, like he thought himself, I guess that he was going in um, um, he had gone in, he told my mom, like, he packed a bag, um, when she took him over because he kind of knew that they were going to keep him because I don't think I ever touched on, he had, he had had some health issues last summer that had come up and he actually almost died last summer from, um, what had happened to him. Um, he had to have surgery. Um, they were able to uh, save him and you know I had talked to him after that and I'm like hey you know you got to do x y and z like you know you really got to start taking care of yourself you know he's only 26 years old so I just really am I don't know taking this a little I mean I, I think I'm doing okay but it's also a little hard because it's rehashing old feelings that I didn't properly deal with when my dad passed away, mainly because I just kind of stuffed those feelings down and like went about life and just kind of acted like um, I was fine and that nothing had happened instead of properly like grieving. So this is like, I don't know, like I'm okay during the day when the kids are awake and when, you know, because they need my full undivided attention, but it's kind of like when, you know, the evening settles in and, you know, everybody in my house goes to sleep or, you know, whatever. Then I start thinking about things and it's kind of, I just really am, I'm just really beating myself up over could have, should have, what, you know what I mean? And I know, I know rationally, like, I know in my heart that there's nothing, there's nothing differently I could have done but it just still, it bothers me. That's where we're at with, with all of that. I, um, I don't know. I'm just trying to like be strong for my mom because the amount of hurt that she's feeling right now, I just, it really hurts me to watch her hurt in that way um, because I know I know there's nothing I can do to take that pain away or to fix it you know what I mean um, you know and, and, and I'm going through my own like stuff right now too because like 
you know, like when I lost other people in my life, um, the only time I had to see them was to say a final goodbye at a funeral or viewing. I never physically watched it happen. And I think that is what is really just messing with my head, like seeing that. Also having to make the decision to withdraw life support was another thing that I just, I knew, I knew for my mom's sake, like she, she was really, really, really like obviously distraught. Like I can't even imagine how distraught she must have been in that moment. And she looked at me on FaceTime and said that she couldn't do it. So I just, I had to, I had to muster up the strength to tell them like, like they told me he had basically no chance of survival. Like he would not have made it. And in the back of my head, I know that. And I know that he didn't deserve to suffer at all. Like, and, and he was, he was heavily sedated on a ventilator, on a ventilator, then later on life support. And everything that was happening to his body, he was suffering. And that hurt me a lot. That made it not easier to make the decision, but I don't, you don't want to see anybody that you care about or you love suffering. And I know how my dad was and I know how my brother was and I know the type of people they were and I know that if they would have to had lived out their final days of life hooked up to machines, that that is not something they would have wanted. So I had to be selfless. And I had to let him go. Because even though selfishly, like we wanted to keep him here with us, <clears throat> he was suffering. So I made the decision <clears throat> and told the doctors what they needed, you know, they needed an answer. So I gave them their answer. <clears throat> My mom kind of just nodded along with it because we knew that he, when he passed, he would go be with my dad. And for years, like, I know he missed my dad so much and he took it really, really hard when my dad died. Rightfully so, he was there to witness it. And ironically enough, he's the one that had to tell the doctors to stop life-saving measures on my dad. So, that's what happened. You know, back in February, my brother, I'll tell you a little story. My brother decided, they had, they had, I had, I, I always grew up with dogs. Um, my dad always had German Shepherds and they were always, always very well-trained dogs. Um, our last German Shepherd that we had actually, um, they bred two police dogs, two police drug dogs. And our dog, Samantha, she was a, uh, a puppy from that litter that they had bred those two dogs from our neighboring counties. It was like one drug dog from one area and one drug dog from another area and they bred them. And um, we ended up getting a puppy. Um, and she was a good dog but my dad always had shepherds and um when i was in high school i decided that you know i don't even remember maybe it was middle school high school sometime i was like oh that was when paris hilton was big and i was like let's get let's get a little dog i want a little dog and i wanted to like a chihuahua my dad was like no so we ended up getting a jack russell terrier and then my grandparents who lived near us, they got a Jack Russell Terrier. And their Jack Russell Terrier was naughty. She did not listen. So our dog, her name was Sydney. And then my grandparents' dog, their dog's name was Daisy. Well, Daisy was a naughty dog. She was 
chewing up all their stuff and it was really, really bad. And they didn't know what to do with her and blah, blah, blah. So what ended up happening was we ended up in, I don't want to say inheriting, but that's pretty much what it was. They couldn't deal with Daisy anymore, so they gave her to my parents. So we ended up with two Jack Russells after our German Shepherd had passed away. So <clears throat> Daisy ended up being more like my brother's dog. He like treated her like a damn baby, carried her around everywhere. But that was either or. She Daisy ended up passing away in 2017. And my mom was like, absolutely not. We're not getting a puppy. We don't have time for a puppy. Like, I'm not getting any more dogs. Well, in February, my brother decided that he was going to go. He didn't drive. Okay, my brother didn't drive. He took a freaking cab or an Uber or something like 45 minutes away and bought a puppy. Didn't tell my mom. Now, mind you, he lived with my mom brought this damn dog home. I don't know like what people believe in or anything like that, but I said to my mom, I almost wonder if he had some kind of premonition like that something was gonna happen to him and that he needed to get this dog. So either way, now my mom has this puppy named Sadie, Sadie Jack. Ironically enough, Aaliyah's favorite movie is All I Want for Christmas is You, Mariah Carey's movie. And in her movie, she has a little Jack Russell, and his name is Jack. So, we have this little puppy that my brother bought. So it's like a little, little piece of him left, you know? My mom gets to, you know, have the companionship of the puppy. The kids love the dog. I would FaceTime with my mom because obviously social distancing before all of this happened with my brother and my brother would get the dog to howl for the girls and the girls would howl back at the dog. So it was like their thing every time my mom would be on FaceTime, my brother would make the dog howl and then the girls would howl back at the dog at him. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to come on and share with you guys what was going on. I do have a cook with me that is edited and it is actually like waiting, waiting um, for me to post. It's already uploaded. I just never posted it. So I'm going to, I'm going to upload that shortly. I also have the video about the damn baby shark. Um, that video, the audio is horrible though. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet, but that's where I've been at. I'm just trying to kind of deal with what life is throwing at us right now, which I'm not going to sit and do the whole woe is me thing, but it's like, well, how much shit can one family take? I, um, I wanted to come on and talk to you guys a little bit before my videos resumed and, and all this stuff, you know, went on, um, because I didn't want to, I know I didn't owe anybody an explanation, but I felt like I needed to come on and talk about this to more so have it for myself than anybody else. But just, you know, I am going to get out of here, finish driving home. Um, to all of you celebrating the 4th of July today, I hope you have a happy 4th. Um, I hope everyone is staying safe. Guys, uh, stay, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.